Tia mai te tauru o te rangi kia tīnā kia o hena kia toka te mana waora Tīnā toka te mana waora ki oa Tīnā toka te mana waora ki rangi nui e tū nei e o papatua nuku e tako toa ke nei Ki tēnā ki tēnā o tātou te oanaunga oanaunga me ngā piri ngā kāranga maa Āpi te atu te ngā mau iwi te ngā e tāmi ani te pōiri tanga koi arā e rongo o ake i reaki ki runga Kia tīnā tīnā Ui e tai tie E aku iti, e aku rai Nau mai rā ki a piri, nau mai rā ki a tata O ki mai ki tēnei hōtaka Ko ngā ranga tiro te āpōpō Ko se on lek the priest tēnei E mi atu rā ki koutou katoa Nau mai rā, rau mai rā ki tō tātou nei ōtaka Where taumata here Have their opportunity to provide their world view on different kaupapa that we have for our um, that we have in Taranaki here that are Taranaki centric. Um, so we've got a bit of a rule, a duty. If we ring our pity, it's your time to finish the questions. We're going to start off our hotaka, and we're going to go around our uh, our fanonga who are here uh, serving on our. Rangatira o te āpōpō taumata So we're going to tīmata over there in Tauranga Ki a koe takutua i ne area Tēnā tātou katoa ko Ria Brognan tōku ingoa He uri tēnei nunga iwi katoa o Taranaki Tēnei te mihi atu Ki a koutou katoa ko hono mai E mātaki taki ana mai Ki a mātou i te pōnei He mihi o ki tēnei Tēnā koe e te tua ini Ka hōkai atu rā ki a koe e Seth Nau te rākau kōrero Kei a koe te rākau kōrero Just had to do a unmute, Kazi Kei te pai, it's all good, it's our whare. Tēnā rā koutou whānau, ko se tapaareke ke wala taku ingoa, ka noho au ki whakatū a he uri a hau no ngā rua hine. Ai, tēnā koe. Ai, tēnā koe, Seth. Ka uri ki a koe te tua ine e te rau mā ora, kei a koe te wā. Tēnā nō ki a koutou. Tēnā. Ko wai au, he mokopona anō o tō mātou maunga tito hea ko Taranaki ki te taho o tōku māma, he uri o hau o Ngāti Tama te ati awa Taranaki iwi tōnu. Kia hononga au ki ngā iwi o ngā puhi, ngā ti raukawa, nga ti mani a poto hoki ki te taho o tōku pāpa, nō te whānau hili a hau, e noho ana ki ngā motu a hau. Engari, ka whiri whiri ia e au kia kuhua a kuhua katoa ki rotu i te kete o nga ti te whiti hapu, i te mea karekau he marae mō tātou, nā reira kei te tautoko tonu au ki te hanga te te he marae hau mō tōku. Ko whānau ki te taho o te moana ko ngā motu Nā reira, tēnei te mihi ki a koutou E hoa mai e whanaunga Ki a koutou e matakitaki mai ana Tēnei te mihi mai o koa ki a koutou Ko au tēnei Tēnā koe O ki atu ki a koe e testimi Kei a koe te wā 
Uh, kia ora, ko Destiny Hodges Paul tōku ingoa, he uri tēnei nō Ngāti Tama, Ngāti Mutunga, Ngāti Kahunga nu ki te wairoa me Ngāpi. Ai, kia ora. Ka pai, uh, tēnā tātou e aku rangatira, um, i ki koutou katoa e no o meira i runga i tēnei o ngā taumatoa te pō. Um, so we're going to kick right into it. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Sao Nick Napis and I'm from uh, the Centre of the World, Waita. Um, and yeah, so kia ora. Uh, we're going to go all around and just so you understand, not everyone's going to answer the questions. We're going to kick into it. We're going to let the way to take us wherever the way to takes us. So, kia ora te anu. Pātou tua tai. Ria. We're going to talk about marae protocols. We're going to have a bit of a call at all about marae protocols and, and, and we want to know your whakaaro on this kaupapa. If there were no Māori around, would you be content in allowing Tōiwi to fulfil our roles as in karanga and whaikōrero? Wow, what a question. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, wow. Um, if there were no Māori at all, karikau, no, nah, I wouldn't. Um, nah, oh, I'm actually quite well by that question. Um, no, nah, I, I would say no. No. Nah. Nah. Kia ora. That, that's about it. That's about it. Jordan. That's just a straight no from me. We don't mind, we don't mind, but this, this is personally from me, and so it's kind of good. Tēnā koe e te tua ine. Uh, te rau mā ora, um, we've heard our views from our whanaunga, and, and, and absolutely not. If there's no Māori, then um, don't fulfil the roles. Now, we find ourselves in different situations here in Taranaki, uh, and, 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 and there's no doubt that it'll be all over Aotearoa. Um, but do you think our whanau are, are readily prepared or adequately prepared to fulfil those roles of the pai pai? Kia ora, um, Are we adequately, adequately prepared? Um, if we have a look around, if we're talking about i tēnei wā, like um, I, I really feel that, um, especially I totoko a lot, my, my hapu here, Ngāti Tipiti, and I've found that I've had to step up into that role of kaikaranga um, long before I had ever thought that I would be stepping into such a role. Um, um, and and it was because of the support from my co-matua who um, we have lost many in just the last few years. So um, was I adequately prepared at that stage? Probably not. Um, so I, being put in that position, really I've had to just throw myself into every type of wānanga and and um, and learning space to be able to to um, build my my capacity, if you will, with the support of those around me um, and Fano who are in the know. So um, it's a scary thought when you do look at our pai pai. They're quite destitute yeah. um, at the moment. It's the same, our same, our same Fano that are doing those roles and and fulfilling those roles. And I am seeing my generation, our generation, standing up into those roles. Um, it's nerve wracking, um, but uh, I feel it. You know, if we don't, like you said, um, and ask that partai to Ria, um, that is our um, reality, that if we, we're not jumping into those roles um, at this stage, then it very much could be lost, those those types of art forms. So, um, I yeah, I just really try and inspire um, our whānau. And me and some aunties are actually working on a, on a, a wānanga to be able to... Um, build the capacity within our hapu because we know we are destitute ourselves um, being here in Namutu and we're quite a busy hapu being um, in, in town. Um, we've got a lot of kaupapa that we attend to so we are desperately wanting to get that kaupapa off the ground. So um, to answer your question, I hope I've answered it in a really roundabout way, um, we're probably not adequately prepared in terms of numbers, but I see our whānau stepping up and, and trying their best to, to prepare themselves for, for a role that we, yeah, that we weren't ready for 
if yeah. Kia ora. Uh, Kia ora. Destiny. Destiny, do you believe uh, that we as hapu and we as iwi could do more to uh, adequately prepare our rangatai for these roles? Um, I think yes, but also it goes in parallel to um, our rangatahi um, having the right mindset to start to learn about our different kaupapa on the marae. So they both play um, similar roles within adequately preparing the rangatahi for um, kaikaranga, kaikarakia, all those sorts of stuff. Because if the mindset isn't there and their will to learn it, then it's not going to be learnt. Yeah, so I sure. think, um, yes, but also there needs that extra afi as well. Kia ora. Tēnā koe. Um, Seth, um, do you think our rangatai are actually interested in these jobs? Yeah, um, for me specifically, like I have met a few um, rangatahi and stuff that are really like keen on learning of the full immersion Māori stuff, but if they can't get that starting point and make a start, then most of them won't. Because like, I hate to do my heart scared of coming back to where they're from, but like never have been back before and just getting torn down by whoever's there. Um, sure. So if there are jobs coming up, like realistically, the people you'd be calling are either the ones that are already where home is, where our whenu is, or you'll be calling people from out of town. And if they come from out of town, there's a chance they don't know anyone, so they'll need money to settle and stuff like that. So it's a bit tricky, that one. Kia ora. Yeah. Um, Ria, are you in favour of the job getting done regardless of who they are, or would you prefer? So, sorry, are you in favour of the job getting done? So, we have many times where Alpha Nonga all come from all over the Mutu, and they all want to gather underneath the Maru of Taranaki, of course, and we love that when that happens because Taranaki is home to all. Um, but there are some cases where you have some whāna who are always there and, and they would like to conduct it, but you know they're not quite on up the scratch doing it. Do you allow them to carry on doing that, mate? Or do you just say to them, well, actually, actually, whanaunga, um, I don't think you should at this point in time. What is your whakaro about that? Well, at the end of the day, kurato ki te ahika. Um, hey, they're keeping the home um, fire burning. So, <clears throat> who am I to go in there and tell them what's up? Hey, Kotaku, Mokuaki, um, he aki aki arato. Um, sure. and, and Kotaku, he, he mea nui te aki aki, um, in ngā tangata e hia hia. Nui te ana te, te, te hapa i te kaupapa, uh, te kawe ngā tikanga. Uh, so, Kotaku, uh, he, he afi, he tauafi a rātou, um, he aki aki. Uh, yeah, who am I to go in and tell them what's up? Hey, because kei, kei tauranga hau e noho ana i tēnei wā. I wouldn't go home and tell them, tell them what's up. Um, Kotaku, yeah, he tauafi nui ho. Yeah. Uh, kia ora. Shot. Hard out. Hard out. <laughs> um, destiny. Do you believe that we'd have more capability or more whānau on the pai pai if it was a paid position? Um, yeah, probably. Um, money is always going to be a benefit to any role. So, yeah, it'll definitely get more people engaged, but I, I don't see why um, you'd need money to Order. step into that role because the role it brings mana and mana goes above everything in my opinion yeah kia ora um, ngami. um te rau māora. and the reason why i ask that question uh, is because you know sometimes we have whanaunga who are sitting there on the pipeline and we all know they're struggling uh we all know that that they'd rather come to the par 
and and make sure that iwi or the wider whanau are all right and and start neglecting their own fun. I'm not saying this happens whanau, but you know it starts to take a toll on the whanau at home. You know, Papa's not home, or Mama's not home, or or or, or Nanny's not home, or or, or Koro's at the pa. You know, and it gets more and more like that. Um, and, and we see Fanonga who want to have the best for the wider whanau, and sometimes it takes precedence at home. Um, do you believe that our whanonga on the pai pai should be paid in order to support their whanau at home? It's a tough one, eh? Because um, I've, yeah, I've had, I've seen personal experience of this, I've had personal experience of our whanau, especially our kaumatua, just going from marae to marae, down to South Island, um, down to Wakatu, coming up and travelling. And we know that these um, kaumatua are, you know, they're doing it. They're struggling. They're struggling to make ends meet. Um, I think if we think of putia in terms of energy, um, because it comes and goes, I think we really can think about things um, and how we can value our people a lot more because um, I think koha would be a help to people. And, and look, this is about us taking responsibility of being observant um, as a whānau and as a hapu, I feel. Like if we know this whānau struggling and we know that they are tirelessly exhausting every bit of time that they have their energy and sacrificing their time away from home it's i really think it's a responsibility of of our hapu to come together and take care of each other like we did pre-colonized like pre-colonial pre time so um yeah uh, sometimes these kui are on um on on empty on their car but they still make it to that hui um probably um, through the power of karakia that they're making it to this way but yeah i think if we if if we as a hapu are observant of these things that these whanau are struggling um to really meet the needs of our people then um how can we give our energy and how can we value them it may not be you know just a monetary um way of things it might be manaki tanga and and ensuring they've got enough kai or enough petrol um yeah why not why not? Um, we're doing so much. We're keeping a nine to five job in Tiao Parkia. We're we're you know Māori people are busy people, and um, I see the same people doing the same mahi, um, and and really exhausting a lot of their time and a lot of their energy and sacrificing a lot. So um, it'll be cool if we could value value our whānau and just be observant, just be you know manaki of them and supportive. Um, kia ora. Um, nah, me, that's a mean, that's a mean one because we always think, oh, you know, they're okay because they're doing this mahi, but then we're quick to forget, we are quick to forget that, oh, oh after this, what happens, you know? And, 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 you know, let's not mince words, whānau. Um, things are happening a lot more regularly now than they are, and the struggle is real, isn't it? So, um, we're going to cross over to you, the te, uh, whananga, Seth. Um, just one more on the marae. Um, do marae smarts outsmart qualification smarts? Ya o whakaro, tēnā pātai. Wait, could you reframe that question again, please? Does marae smarts outsmart qualifications? You mean like Māori qualifications? So like uh, like any qualifications that you obtain from a um, um, uh, a learning institute, educational yeah. institute? So, yeah. So, for yeah. instance, does Marae Smarts in the kitchen outsmart someone who's a chef and got the qualifications of a chef? Uh, it, depends on the, it depends on the kitchen and the food you're making as well. You can't just take the one aspect. They're like all the aspects join in together. Like if we're going to make a some a feed for like a tangi and stuff and obviously the marae will kick it off we've got to put out the back and put a hangi in slow roast the pig um, steam heaps of potatoes smash out all the dishes whereas if you're doing a feed for a tangi in like a five-star restaurant like everyone will be waiting there till like three days or something just for the main meal it takes so long so i'd say like yeah it depends on the function and what you're trying to get out of it 
Kilda. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, Marae Marae Street smarts are good. They go pretty hard, actually. Like the respect and the tikanga and stuff. They don't speak unless um, that person's finished speaking. Don't take your um, dirty shoes inside. They just sit on tables. Don't annoy all the old people while they're eating. Otherwise, you're gonna get a hiding. So yeah, <laughs> that that sort that sort of smart say eh? like you'd waste people over in like Wellington, like uni students and stuff. Normally quite rude and obnoxious, obnoxious and I don't know full on life, I suppose. But yeah, I reckon um, in certain aspects the Marai smarts pay off way better than the university smarts. Depends where you use them and how you use them. Kia um, Yeah, I mean, personally, I'd, refer, I'd prefer to get a boot up the nunu from Koro instead of a growling from Nenny. So, yeah, those, those growlings, pretty, you know, they go pretty deep, those growlings. Uh, Ria, just quickly go over to you. Marae smarts or qualification? Marae smart. Even though my um, husband's a chef, um, hey, he looks at the marae. <laughs> hey, shut up. He looks at the marae. Um, and what I love about our aunties and, hey, like Mata, for example, who leads the kitchen at, at Uwai, hey, we can make nothing out of, you know, you know, we can make things and make them taste like five-course meals. <laughs> like, hey, even if you were to give us a kamo kamo, that we can make kamo kamo five, like, in five different ways. Kia <laughs> And that's what I love about um, the Maraikai. Um, and honestly, we can go, to, go out into the Ngahere and just grab our kai um, and cook it five different ways as well, as well as fish. Um, and you know what? And once we come up with a, um, you know, a something, it's called mana. Hey, we keep it on our menu. <laughs> so uh, it's marae uh, for me. It's marae. Uh, um, and I'm going to use my um, husband. He learned from the Marae. And, you know, when he um, started, oh, you know, when he finished Kuda, he ended up becoming a chef. But I know for a fact that he learned at the Marae with all his nannies. Because he still uses that, um, you know, he still uses that butter plate to cut his fry bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Marae. Yeah. Uh, then, Akui. Um, so, yeah, kia ora, for, kia ora for that, everyone. That was awesome. Uh, we're going to move on to um, sort of leadership and the qualities of leadership. And, and it's something we sort of have recorded or with all our little rōpū that hang out and we all say, oh, that person's the leader or no, that person's the leader and all that sort of stuff. Destiny, do you believe that a leader should be out in the community more than... Everyone else? Um, it depends what kind of leader you are. Um, if you're leading the people, then definitely. But if you're like a, um, what's it called? Like backstage leader. So you lead, um, you know, in everyday life and um, even in like normal kaupapa, then yeah, you wouldn't have to be in the community a lot to show people that you're a leader because it's the qualities that make you a leader rather than um, your, um, what's it called? Yeah, just you being there. Kia ora. Um, and, and I'm hearing from that as qualities is what determines a leader. And, and going along in the same line, Te Maura, do you believe that those qualities are being stored in our rangatira, uh, rangatai at the moment so that they become good leaders in the future or so that they do become leaders? Do you believe those qualities are being um, adopted or whangai by our rangatai at the moment? Um, if I think about the question that Ria and Destiny have both answered, in terms of like, oh, and CS, sorry, um, around marae smarts and, and um, having qualifications. I think everything that we learn really um, that we need in this world starts at kōhanga. I think all of those beautiful values that we learn as pepe, um and as tamaiti, like whanaunga tanga, 
um, and kotahi tanga, manaki tanga, um, karakia tikanga, um, those real raw values is really what we should be. Um, I mean, we're human at the end of the day. We're going to make mistakes. Um, and um, But, yeah, I think those values, if we can try and inspire by being an example wherever we go, um, then um, and not really beating ourselves up for making those mistakes either. So being kind to ourselves as well as being kind to others. We learn those things in kōhanga, and I just think if we just retract back to what our babies are being taught in kōhanga, then we can kind of put ourselves back on track. And and just remember the biggest thing is that when when you're interacting with somebody, um, protect their mana as well as protecting yourself at, at the same time, and you'll you'll pretty much stay on the right track. And and be a leader in in whatever environment that you're in. Kia uh, Seth, do you believe uh, leaders should be active within the community? Uh, yo, um, like personally, I just don't like leadership, eh? But um, yeah, I reckon if you're a leader, whatever like examples you're trying to set, you'd have to do them first. So, like, if you're trying to influence your community, then, yeah, you'd be out in the community, set an example for the rest of your team, get a bit of that leadership in. Um, but, yeah, even if you're just trying to figure out, like, what's going on around you, um, it's probably pretty good to get up those connections if you need those connections in future times. Um, yeah, I'd say it's beneficial for the uh, leader to be within the community if that's um, in line with what they're up to. But like Destiny was saying, like maybe they're behind the scenes kind of leader and you got your like front face sort of person for if you're running a business, like, you know, you got your CEO, but it's actually the board that runs the scenes. So, yeah, I think it's it's necessary for at least having a representation of your group in the community. If that's your leader sure. or someone else, yeah, that's my opinion on it. Tēnā uh, Leah, do you believe leadership is something that you are brought up to do, or do you believe a leader can pop out at any time and can be anyone? Can be anyone. That's what I believe. Um, and I'm, I'm actually um, quite proud of our Rangatahi at the moment. Um, they, they actually blow my mind. Um, they are actually. Um, paving the path at the moment, um, and, and I'm loving it. Seeing our rangatahi on online, like doing the trial heat show, um, I was watching the other day, and I was I was, I was mind blowing because um, they're actually being heard. Um, and I know there's there there are a lot of followers on um, this page, and even feedback that I receive from. You know, some of my other cousins, like, it's awesome to see our rangatahi from Taranaki actually, you know, having conversations. Um, and, you know, me not living in Taranaki and haven't been living in Taranaki for quite a while, um, to see them in that space is really exciting. Um, and I love it. And, um, yeah, I, I just love it. I, I was just really happy to see um, those pages, oh, you know, that, that one and a space on Kurimako. But yeah, anyone can be a leader. I believe that. Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, well, tēnā tātou. Um, that's sort of our leadership segment. Um, we're going to move on to education whānau. And education is a massive thing for us as, as, as sort of whānau around Taranaki Maunga. And, and my question would be to you, uh, both Seth and Te Rau Māhora. Uh, we're going to go Seth and Te Rau Māhora. Um, are our schools suitable at this current moment in time for our tamariki to achieve the highest education possible? Seth. Um, so highest, highest education possible, eh? Like, um... I went to um, Auckland Grammar School up in Auckland, and it's a uh, I went to a Maori hostel set up for this exact same like circumstance. So it's like um, kids brought up in low decile areas, brought to schools of high decile areas, so like better paid teachers, um, just more successful students and stuff. Um, and, uh, we went through this exact same thing, 
Um, and when I got there, you think you're like on top of the mountain and some Asian comes across, man, and you're dirt at any mathematician sort of equation you're going through. So like, if you're looking at the highest like rates of education, I don't think you can actually find it, if I'm being honest. So, um, a high, I reckon the highest like forms of education would go towards the like, outdoors and like the bush and stuff. Um, the only reason why I think that is because it's like relevant in our um, in our army, like the SAS, New Zealand SAS is like top five in the world. Um, we also have heaps of hunter gatherers, and it's pretty well known within our people. Um, we have a lot of knowledge in that background, so I'd say yeah, anything with like jungle terrain or like maybe agricultural. So we have a lot of farms, a lot of beef and sheep exports. Um, but I wouldn't say like in terms of music um basically anything academic like science uh unless you're going for like real specific assets like that mechanic dude who's making those um nasa pieces for them um unless i mean game developers and or game developers in new zealand but that's all sourced from online so i'm not too sure i'd say you could get the highest form of education in new zealand Kia ora. um te rau maora. In short, no, I don't think our our schools are, are built to build um, the greatest um, future leaders. I think, well, I, first of all, they're inequitable. Um, we've got one kura kaupapa here in North Taranaki. Um, we've got a bilingual unit in Waitara, and you've got 60 to 70 odd schools that um, really are struggling with te reo or any of those things. Um, so yeah if i'm a stats girl so i've looked at some stats with our rangatahi um our rangatahi maori in particular um in terms of a school here i won't name them um because you know i've got a lot of aroha for them and uh, because a lot of our kids go there a lot of our maori kids go there um their graduation rates are below 50 percent um they're not even making it to graduation whereas our kura kaupapa are 99 plus so i mean culture is medicine um, are we have, have have Pakia schools, the colonial schools, got the capacity to build the best leaders in our people? Absolutely not. They're not built that way. Um, numeracy and literacy, they focus quite a lot on that. I've got tamariki who have gone to mainstream, and I've got half my tamariki who have been engaged in kura kaupapa and kohanga reo, and I can see the massive differences within my own whanau as, as to the struggles that my uh, mainstream schooler has has. Um, has come across in her journey and we chose to pull her out and homeschool her um, because yeah she struggled um, because numeracy and literacy is the all on the end all um, in terms of you know um, what their focus seems to be whereas our kura kaupapa as we know um, they really nurture the, the the qualities and strengths within our tamariki and they are all different they are vast um, I remind, I'm reminded of this picture that I've seen in my in my role in public health. You've got like a monkey, an elephant, a mouse, a fish in a bowl, and they say all climb this tree, you're going to be um, tested on climbing that tree. I mean, that is our tamariki. It's a one-size-fits-all box, um, the education institution, and what we know is our, you know, our tamariki, if you think of our ancestors, they were the greatest astronauts on Earth, you know. They were the greatest astronauts that that, that – ventured the biggest part of the ocean um, compared to anybody else philosophers um, the best social scientists in the world but are we seeing those rates of our of our, of our rangatahi in mainstream school um i don't think so so um yeah i there needs to be a huge adjustment and i total call seth around you know outdoors and and te taiao as well as our tikanga being um instilled into into schools would be great um and um and i think we'd see a um and more kura kaupapa more access for our for our tamariki and our whanau and our community to have that opportunity to be able to go to kura kaupapa or or um be um in an equitable school that's 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 bicultural really we need to hit that mark Kia ora. Tēnā koe. um destiny and ria do you believe that our Taranaki land wars are being portrayed or taught in kura in schools 
um, accurately will go rea than destiny. Well, no, no, or oh, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't been home for quite a, quite a bit, which is really sad, eh? <laughs> um, but there, there can be more, I suppose. Um, but with with what's happening in the world at the moment, it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's um quite um. Yeah, it can't even do anything at the moment. Um, and, and what I believe is you have to go to the place, Kia um, and, and you can't learn via like this. This is how I see it. And you can't, you can't feel the mamai via Zoom. You can't feel anything via Zoom. But if you were to stand on our whenua taurikura, you can feel it. And, and that's what you want our... Our, rangata, our, our, our tamariki and our rangata, even our pakiki to feel. Um, you say no, because um, it could trigger other things, but that's what I believe. Um, me rongo i, I te ra, i te wide world, o te whenua, um, i te Māori. We're not to ask what tanga katoa, me rongo, yeah, me haere ki taua wahi, katika. Yeah, kora taku. But I think, sorry. Sorry, but I think um, there's way more we can learn um, about our, our, you know, our whenua. Um, and I see, you know, there's a few apps that are out, but getting that information from our own is, is yeah, it's more meaningful, I suppose. And even from our rangatahi, I, I, and I know our rangatahi knows, know all the corridor around that, um, but it's giving them time and opportunity to share that information. Hey, so, um, yeah, yeah, quite a taku. Sorry, that, that's me. <laughs> kia ora, kia ora. Uh, Destiny? Um, so I think for me, um, going from Taranaki, because um, I went to high school here and in intermediate, um, and then moving down to Otago, um, for me, generally, Taranaki, they can come from that Māori point of view and put that Māori lens on and so you can deeper understand um, what our tupuna had to go through and kind of get an idea of how their mindset, their emotions were because you can feel it in the papa whereas um, down in Otago uh, they are trying to teach these different Māori wars but because where I went, all of the lecturers were Pākehā, so they were coming from a very, col like, a colonist worldview and a lens. So their narrative was a lot different to what actually happened um, that we brought up, or we were brought up with. Um, so there were very different sides to this one, um, you know, teaching. Um, and I think that was... Um, really clear to me when I went down there is that they want to try and teach all of these things and try and whakamana our hitori, but they don't understand where our tupuna came from. They can only understand um, what they thought or how they wanted to portray Pākehā to be like back at that time. And I'm not sure whether that's to make themselves feel better or whether they didn't have enough um, Māori references and resources um, to pull those ideas out of. Um, so, yeah, I reckon if you're learning about um, history in the place that you're from, then you get a larger um, understanding of that war. But if it's taught from um, an outside point of view, yeah, then it's going to be incorrect. Older. Yeah. Nah, me. Um, I'm, I'm glad the world was taking us this way. And in and, and the part I, again, I've got to say is there's no wrong answer, and we'll go wherever the world takes us. And and it's beautiful because that's exactly where I wanted to head into fun. You know, 
we have other people telling our stories. We have other people telling us our own stories. So it gets really, it really gets a bit hoha. And, and I, I guess my question to you, uh, Seth, is do you believe that the people who are learning from these people are actually getting to understand the real historic trauma that was put upon us? Um, it really depends, eh? Like, I, um, I really value, like, local history and stuff, but um, I did a bit of history studies, and, like, one of the biggest pieces that I took away from it was um, when you're searching for statements or um, facts to back up your works, it's always, it's not even those that count the most. It's always the resources, and not just the resources. It's, like, who wrote those resources? So if, let's say, from uh, 1947 or something, you get someone, like, reference from a government official, and he's the one who wrote the historical article, well, then, um, logically, that means that he's writing it for his parties of interest, hopefully make a few bucks on the side, probably. So then it's going to be a biased source. And what you do is you get references from the same, like, about the same segment in time, so you could gate par wars, you get some from the Māori records, you get some from the Māori stories, Māori wata and all the other stuff. Um, but you'd also take some from the historical records because they are, I think it's their numbers are more reliable. But in terms of what actually happened, um, depends on the sources and how many sources you got, whether they're unbiased or not. Because back in the day, like, you know, you could, you could go watch a battle, you could go watch a war, you just stand like five k's off on a mountaintop. All oh, those guys are getting wasted. Okay, so the auntie and then it becomes a pūrungo for your whānau. So, yeah, it's just, yeah, for me it just depends on the source and whether it's biased or not. But if like, let's say like someone else has come from like a, a colonised land, like Native American Indian, if he come over, they'd, they'd definitely understand all the pain that our people went through. Like, they would do the same thing. Um, this isn't really commonly known, but same for the Indians. They were colonised by the British. They fought back, got the land back. But that's, that's where, like, our um, ancestors, like, if you look in South Africa, all of the countries that kicked out all the whites, because South Africa was doing the same thing after apartheid went down, but they didn't because Nelson Mandela seen what happened in the Congo, Zimbabwe, Ethiopia, whatever, all the economics have gone to trash and they don't really have a marketing scheme going on and the people are getting exploited for their natural resources whereas we get a chance to at least have a voice and um, yeah you know like all the indigenous peoples around the world we all go to like those conferences like representatives for our people and literally all those races all those nations they know exactly what we've been through we're probably like one of the most successful like um colonized race in the world. Kia ora. Yeah. Kia ora. Um, thank you for that. Uh, Ria, uh, he tāku. Uh, do you believe that uh, the, the hara imposed on us Māori by Tauiwi are played down by Tauiwi? If you do believe that, do you think it's to make themselves feel better or they really seriously just don't know what they did? Yeah, to make us feel better. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, and I suppose we still live in that pauritanga. Um, right. um, you know, and, and it's and we sing it through our water and our and our motetia. Um and, and it's you know, it's, it's it's quite sad, really. A hey, like for example, haka, um, kapa haka, hey, we hear our kapa talking about a hey, the pihitanga and in and, and, and the you know what we have gone through as as a niwi. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I suppose 
um, and, and that, this is what I love about our now rangatahi. Uh, they're actually stepping up and they want to, um, you know, they want to be happy. They want to be heard. Hey, um, I'm going to use, like, my pakeke, our pakeke, for example, um, you know, the, 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 the rangi mari, the raukira and all that, you know, the passive resistance stuff. Um, hey, they just want hari and kua. Hey, and... and and I know deep down that her mama I told me iroto in Um so with with this generation I see them striving, I see them, you know, they gonna hey if you're gonna tell me something, I'm gonna wheel you back on that. Hey, so so it's it's I'm really proud of this generation that's coming through at the moment. Um and and I know that our rangatahi is you know they're beaming, they're pumping, and I love that for our rangatahi. But yeah, what a taku. Tēnā koe. Um, te rau mā ora, i rongo au te ia o te kōrero o takutua ine aria. Do you think we should carry on those historic traumas of our kuia and karaua of our parents? Do you think we should carry it on? and hold on to that mamai, or do you think we should just let it go, let's go, that's us? I definitely think that we can't do, we can't let it go. I think it's in the very fibres of my DNA. Whenever I feel, whenever I see racism or our people suffering, I can feel it in my in my bones, in my puku. Um, it's not a choice, really. Um, because that uh, that trauma is still is still continuing. It's continuing in racist policies that that oppress our people, continue to oppress our people. You can see it in the funding um, that goes towards Māori health and the funding that goes to mainstream, the funding that goes to um, private schools or mainstream schools and the lack of funding that goes to kura kaupapa. You can see it in the rates of our kayako at Kohanga Reo. They don't have pay equity compared to other daycare teachers. Um, and and you see that throughout. Um, Māori are getting paid less than Pākehā as well as women getting paid less than men. So there's still an inequity throughout um, the mutu, um, throughout our, our, you know, our structures um, that we live within. Um, and I, like, like Rhea said, I am just absolutely so chuffed and proud of our rangatahi with all of those oppressing factors um, for them to be able to shine amongst all of that and continue to shine and continue to strive. Um, you know, I, I want to find another word for resilience because, you know, we need to stop telling our people that we're resilient. It's like we have to be. We've got no choice other than to be. Um, and, gosh, it would be nice to just um, relax one day and not have to worry about our people dying earlier or dying um, from preventable things. Um and yeah, and our mental health rates, all of those things, we're overrepresented, Marty. Um, and, wow. and every health, every negative health and social statistic, judicial statistic, um, prison rates. So, um, we can't forget about it. Um, we really need to keep keep breathing. Um, and I mean, that that's as simple as it is. As it is. It's like we're always fighting, but even just to take a breath, we're fighting for that. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a tough subject, and sometimes I get quite emotional when I talk about my people and and um and 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 seeing those things that are that continue to to cause my mind to our people. I know everyone here in this um in this forum has probably experienced it at one time or another, um, whether it be at school or from a peer or yeah, um, walking into a shop yeah. and being followed around. So um, yeah, it's. It would be nice to move on, but um, our our tangata tiriti really need to be responsible for that. Kia ora. Tēnā koe, te rau mā ora. Um, Destiny, do you think we'll ever heal from the historical trauma inflicted upon us? I think that will depend on um, whether the government will truly become a treaty partner 
and whether um, they how like hold themselves accountable, even though they might have not have directly um, like done those actions, but they are a part of the system that oppressed us. So if there was for us to finally breathe and get, you know, be able to move on from it, um, it will all come down to whether the government will be willing to let us do so. Because sure. um, as long as, you know, the system's still there um, and built the way that it was initially, then nothing is ever going to change. Yeah. Kia ora. Um, thank you for that. Uh, Seth, um, do you think the government will get to that point where they will be able to uh, do the things that Destiny was just explaining? Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, <laughs> me, and my, me and my group of mates don't reckon, eh? Hey, um, if I was give my honest opinion of the state of affairs at the moment, um, and New Zealand's one of the most biggest international countries in the world, I think Auckland's like ranked four for cities. Um, and like, you know, that, that sounds mean. Everyone's like, yeah, 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 we can have a racism of these internationals and stuff. Um, but like, you know, like I work on fishing boats, so I go away for like six weeks, come back for six weeks, and I see all these changes. And, um, I know the way I see it is they're like trying to get more, um, international ones or more international citizens in and get them as residents uh, so they can tilt the pole booths and stuff eh? so there's less of a percentage of Māori actually being in New Zealand when we get more international um, citizens come across. It was actually Pākehā guy told me about this uh, but yeah, he just pretty much brainwashed me into thinking that and uh, yeah I don't think it'd be wise for us to let go of these emotional scars because they're like set, um standards and like um what what to expect for us eh? like because our um what our ancestors went through our history and stuff that's their story and basically they went through all this like suffering and torment and stuff and it's up to us to make sure that the future generations coming up don't have to go through that and one of the ways we can we can go about making sure that it doesn't happen again is by learning off their mistakes like our tipman and stuff yeah, because they were portrayed a couple of times, um, but they ended up coming out all right. But it's just, we just got to know not to put our, all our eggs into the one basket. Um, as we are our own people, I reckon we should be like more self-reliant, set up our own structures and not like expect anyone else to come help us up. Just going to um, try and get us on our own feet and work our way up if we can. Then Akwe, um, thank you for that, Seth. And and I noticed you uh, used one word in there, and 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 it's going to be sort of um, the root of our next part. I so we're going to move on from historical trauma because uh, whilst we like to have the conversation of the historical trauma, um, we don't want to set the scene for it to be a historical trauma um, cordial. But we'll always talk about it and and. And we're always keen to go and go there, basically. We'll go there, Fano. So, Kaziria, um, Pākehā. I'm not looking for a literal meaning. I'm, I want to know what your understanding of a Pākehā is. Is it one specific race, or is it just anyone in general that's not a Māori? Yeah, of Karo. I, 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 I'm not going to answer this part I because I've seen, seen it blow up on social media and, and actually my um, father in was a Pākehā and I love him very much. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, so ka waiho ki reira and we'll pass it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very, it's a very uh, serious, um, it's a very serious uh, word when it comes to whanaunga, and, and we need to understand, whānau, that not all Pākehā are the same. Not all Pākehā are the same. And, and Pākehā 
you you just never know. The Pākehā, sometimes the Pākehā is the one who backs us up. So Excellent. not all are the same. And, and, and for those whanaunga who, who, um, who are watching, um, please don't be discouraged. It's not about the demograph of a Pākehā. Uh, the question is based off exactly what uh, the Kazi was talking about. And, and my question to probably destiny at this stage would be, do you allow Pākehā, and I know I've used Tauiwi uh, earlier on in our hōtaka, but do you allow Pākehā to uh, settle or discuss um, Māori kaupapa on behalf of Māori? Uh, maybe not on behalf, but definitely... Um to speak up to Tautoko, um, us as Māori and different kaupapa that are being um, talked about because um, they're very strong. Um, it's a very strong support system if they have Ngāko Mahaki and um, they do understand and they are, um, you know, staying accountable and they are willing to learn um, the atrocities that came from their tupuna. Um, so they can definitely drive um, a certain kaupapa um, if they are allowed to, or well, not allowed, but, you know, we are open to having them there. Um, so, yeah, it's it's... I think it's a different story when it comes to being on behalf of, um, because then it starts to get a bit um, a bit messy um, with all, you know, because some may see it as being like, oh, awesome, you know, yeah. they know what's up. But then other people will be like, well, who says that they have the right to speak on behalf of um, tangata whenua? Um, so it really de just depends on the different opinions, but I think the safest way for them to help um, bring up these kaupapa is to stand beside us rather than on behalf of us. Kia ora. Um, te rau mahora. Uh, we have whakatauki that are around in te ao Māori in, or whakatau aki, however you want to say it. In, in. Our, our tūpuna or our tipuna we're talking of of the different people, right? So the Tauiwi, the Pākehā. And, you know, there's one whakatauki that comes to mind, and, you know, I think it goes somewhere along the lines, kia mau ki ngā at te Pākehā, and then goes on. Do you believe it is beneficial for Taranaki Māori, Taranaki Rangatai, to walk in both worlds, or just in Te Ao Māori? Oh. Um, if I think of a whakatauki, I love that you brought up whakatauki, um, I want to share one that Te Whiti o Ronga Mai, um, Te Tua Toru, shared with my great-great-great kuia, her name is Meditatana, she lays down at Waitapu, um, down um, on Namotu Beach, down at our Urupa, um, he told her, ke te haramai te wā, ka puta he wakarino, ki te kete o te tai haua uru, Ka kawe a ngā taonga mō ngā tamariki o te atua. The, um, one day there will come a day when the steel ships will will port at the west gate. Um, we used to call it te kete o te tai hauaru, Port Taranaki, and they'll bring the um, gifts to the children of God. And um, he was speaking of the really, in short, um, the relationship that is going to happen and will happen um, and has been happening between uh Tauiwi and and Wopakia and and Tangata Whenua. So, in terms of his prophecy and what that looked like for him, um, I'm still waiting for the day for Ngā Taonga. <laughs> for the you know, I'm waiting for the day that they you know we've we've already I think Mato Ranga in all its forms, knowledge in all its forms is is quite powerful. Whether it be Tauiwi, whether it be science, um, whether it be history, whether it be Mato Ranga Māori. Um, I think Matauranga is powerful. From then, we can um, make more informed decisions because we've got more um, opportunities and resources at our fingertips. 
Um, and that could definitely be one of those things that that is a taonga that the Pākehā have brought with them. Um, I think it's really utterly important to learn and the learn the ways of the Pākehā because we are in a very Pākehā system. We're living it. Um, although there was a tetiriti, we know tetiriti um, um, is not being adhered to. And, and you can see our rangatahi and our, our people educating themselves in the Pākehā system to try and make change through policy because policy and law overrule everything. Um, so it's definitely important, I feel. Um, but in saying that, I've got whānau that completely sit in te ao Māori. They like their whare and they like, you know, their toilet paper or whatever, but they, their whakaro is whakaro Māori, and um, I absolutely love and respect that too and their wishes to to be able to, to keep those tikanga going. And they... Um, yeah, they, you try and get them to turn on a computer, they wouldn't know how. Um, so, but are they any less um, important? Absolutely not. If anything, they're they're vital because um, they are f constantly living in that in, in Te Ao Māori, and we need that. We need that. Um, but yeah, I I don't think um, if you choose either or either, uh, doesn't make you any doesn't make you have any less mana. We're all born with mana. Um, and and if that's your huarahe, then you know kate pie. Um, in terms of trying to prompt change for our people, and if we go back on historical trauma, I think it's quite vital in that sense to be able to stop those structures and d disassemble them um, that are continuing to cause trauma for our people. So I. Kia ora, tēnā koe. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, each to their own, and we must remember that um, for whānau who are watching, uh, it's not right or wrong to walk in just one world or two worlds or any world. We, you know, I'm not here to dictate to you that that's what you should be doing. Uh, we are purely here to see the world view and the whakaro of our emerging leaders, our emerging leaders who are going to basically lead us into the future and, you know, in koe rā te taumata e no o meira i mua i katoa. No reina. Um, we're coming to the end of the show, Fano, or the end of the program. I'm going to do a quick one roundabout of, of, of apartheid. Um, so, yeah. So, me koa te raki a koutou. Um, quick fire question. Uh, Seth. Is the Okura and its principles still relevant today? Yes, no, why? You're on mute, Kazi. Yo, I didn't even know what is the what's the Rokura Rokura rules. What are we talking about? Rokura. Ah, is the Rokura the principles of the Rokura? I own or a crori kitatu a runga wa manga rongo kitafinu a fakaro piking atanga takatua. Ah, kwa kwa ha kwa no wea, and as of last week, ah kwa no vaccinated. So. Is it still, how's about we come over here to Destiny and then we'll come back to you, Seth. Uh, the Rokura, is the principles of the Rokura still um, applicable today? Uh, I reckon the Rokura and its principles will forever be applicable. Um, it doesn't yeah. matter, um, you know, whether it's 10 years down the track, now 50 years, um, it'll still remain relevant uh, yeah, and it will always be significant. Yeah. Tēnā koe. Edia, uh, do you believe that Okura is one of is is going to help us through some troubling times we are going through at the moment? And yes, they are troubling times, whānau. Uh, when I'm talking troubling times, we're getting COVID here. You know, we're having world pandemics. Uh, our whanaunga are all getting locked up in different areas of the, of the motu. You know, we're having whānau who are having issues against issues, you know, issues against each other due to vaccination rates and all that sort of court at all. But without getting into the controversy of vaccination rates, do you believe our Rokura and its principles could be very well the saviour for us here in Taranaki? Absolutely. Yeah, nah, Absolutely. Um, I actually wear it on my arm. Oh, you probably can't see it. And, and it always reminds me of home and, and the principles of why we are it. Hey, hey, so it's 
So if I'm in one of those moods, hey, katiro, tōtika ki taku ringa. Um, and, and I remember, um, you know, where I actually come from and what we, who we are as a people. Um, and sometimes what you said about, you know, the, the what's happening in this world today, um, sometimes you can get lost in that world. And, and, and when you're lost in that world, um, you need something to pull you back. And and I suppose having these wānanga, these type of wānanga, it, it, it would be an eye-opener. Like, yeah, true. True that. Hey, just just go back to our, our kupu o haki. Hey, what te fiti and tohu left us. Our te toko waru kōrero and, you know, all our all our um, prophets, our tohunga, our, you know, always go back to those, to that kōrero, because that will guide us through our hardest time. That's what I believe anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually oh, I'm saving my life at the moment, the ringa ringa. <laughs> tēnā koe, tēnā koe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I'm fairly lost, koe nei, koe nei te tūru, you know. Um, and yeah, you know, and, and honestly, I miss home all the time. Um, and I'm, when I'm feeling, you know, a bit lost, hey, like I said, I always, you know, look at kupu o haki of our, our tipuna. Um, and that guides me through through life and, and my hardest time. Yeah, quite a haki. <laughs> Tēnā koe. Te rau māhora. Yao o whakaro. Absolutely. Absolutely. I try and live by the raukura as much as I can. Um, and yeah, a hako a kō wai. Um, goodwill to all mankind absolutely um i think if we look at history it's definitely got now people through so many different events and and i really think it's going to get us through this one as well um that's yeah just helping ourselves like we need to remind ourselves sometimes especially when i'm like when we're in hapu space sometimes i see my whanau whawhai and i'm like oh we are nati te fiti you know um, how are we going to bring this whānau together and stop the whawhai? And I know it's generationally, you know, it's generational trauma. I understand that. Um, but, yeah, we need to be kinder to each other. Yeah. Naraukura starts with the raukura. Ai. That's why it was left to us. Oh, tēnā koutou e aku piki raukura. Nō reira, um, Seth. Uh, one final question for you, brother. Uh, me to you, brother. You, you've sort of been the only sort of, uh, we've got three roses here between two thorns. And you're one of those thorns, so uh, me to you, brother. I've got one more part time for you. Um, Sweet. Is it Okuda an inherited responsibility or is it an inherited right. Bro, I, I'm not too sure what Rokura means. Any Rokura I know is from like Utsuru, the Kapaka group. Oh, it's true. Like, yeah, that's the only time I've heard it. Bro, I, I'm like from Taranaki, but I didn't go back there till I was like 18. I've already mm. done all my like learning my Māori tekanga and purungos by then. So I've just been out working since. Uh, that's sort of why I've joined this group, I meet all the Kazis and try and get connected and stuff. Yeah, that's what it's for. Connections, <laughs> connections. <laughs> like, I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh, kaita pai tēnā. At the end of the day, you've been able to take a part in our wānanga and, and we've all been able to connect and whakawhiti kōrero and that. Um, so, yeah. So, that brings us to the end, whānau. Um, I want to thank you, the taumata, for putting up with my ridiculous questions. Some of them were well, not so ridiculous, but some of them were pretty far out there. And I do commend you fellas in your um, in your answers. At least there wasn't no F bombs and all that sort of stuff. So me kikoto uh maku e waka kapi to tata ne waanga um kirunga kiraro kiroto kiwa o rire rire ho pai marire pai marire kiata katoa. <laughs>